7th of September 2018, I started my 16,100 km bike ride around Australia. So I started up in Broome and I followed the whole west coast down to Perth, cut down to Albany, Esperance, and then over the whole Nullarbor down to Adelaide and then down to Melbourne, took the night ferry over to Tasmania, went around Tasmania, back to Melbourne with the night ferry, then I followed the whole east coast up to Sydney, Brisbane and then up to Cairns and from Cairns I had to cut into the Northern Territories again, back to Catherine and over to Broome. So I spent a few hours on the beach in Broome before I started my huge bike trip around Australia. I felt a little bit nervous but also very excited. Already my first few hours on the bike I realized that this was going to be a very warm journey and I had already temperatures up to 35 plus degrees. Hopefully she can heal though. The first couple of weeks I had to get up around 3.30 in the morning before the sun was up because it was way too hot to bike during the days. So normally I biked to maybe 11, 12 o'clock and then I had a nice little break between 12 and 3 and then I kept on biking for a few more hours before it was time for me to put the, my tent up. Western Australia offers some really nice camp spots. They were often very remote and not many people around. I could unfortunately not always swim in the river since it's a lot of crocodiles around and everyone warned me to not get into the water. Okay, today has been a long day. I've been doing 160 k's and I still didn't have breakfast yet because I didn't find a shady spot and this is the only shady spot I found. <laughs> After 11 days on my bike and around 1,100 kilometers, I was making my way in towards Exmouth, where I was going to meet up with my friends Phil and Pete, they're running this great little brewery, Froth. So if you're ever visiting Exmouth, I strongly recommend you to pop into Froth and have a cold beer, some good food and enjoy the good service. Thank you guys for making my stay so awesome, I really do love you. And I've been representing your hat with proudness. I said goodbye to X month and then I had an eight day long bike ride to Perth. The most of the time I followed the Indian Ocean Drive, which was really, really beautiful along the coast. Also, Geraldton was one of the highlights, and I thought it was a very nice little city. Pretty sick when you're rocking up to a camp spot like this. In Geraldton, I met up with Rhys and Vanessa, which are some old friends back in the days when I used to do winter seasons in St. Anton. They showed me around and offered me to stay with them and we had a very lovely time together. After my time in Perth, I started to bike towards Margaret River and then I crossed down towards Albany and to Esperance. It was a very beautiful landscape with a lot of hills and wineries along the way. When I got to Esperance, the weather was really, really bad. So I went to Woolworth to buy some food, so I was ready and prepared for the big, big ride over Nullarbor. Outside the food shop, I met this awesome guy from Holland, Lex Licker, the wind blocker, and we decided to do Nullarbor together. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. <laughs> got it? Yeah. 
So Malabon is a 1200k ride from Normanton over to Siduna. It's nothing along the way except a few gas stations and it's long distance between, between 3 to 400 k's. On our first day over Nallaborn, we also met Gavin, Jonathan and Malcolm, three really cool guys and we decided to do Nallaborn together. So we spent it seven days and had a really good time and they told me everything from riding in a group to sit in the wheel. One of the most rewarding things along this journey was to see these beautiful cliffs in the middle of the Nallaborn, in the middle of nowhere, after seeing just desert, after day, after day, after day. We made it over Nalabor without any bigger issues and we did have crosswind the whole time. When we came to Sidhu and it was time for us to say bye to Malcolm, Gavin and Jonathan. Me and Lex Licker, the wind blocker, rode together to Port Augusta where our roads were separating. in my tent and making some dinner. It's um, chia bread with some beans and nachos on. After 41 days and 6,000 km later, I was making my way in towards Adelaide. So me and my bike are on the ferry. After the Nallabor I started to do longer days. I was doing normally around 180 to 190 k's every day. This is what I call making breakfast with a very nice view. So this is my style for today. It's a lot of flies on the road. They are so annoying. So I'm keeping my net on our car is coming. One of the most beautiful experiences along my way around Australia was to bike the Great Ocean Road. It was just unbelievable how much beautiful things it was to see and it was so nice that I just could stop with my bike and watch it all. The last three days it's been heaps of signs along the roads that it should be koalas around. Of course I've been sitting looking up in the trees and hoping to see my first koala but they are very 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 hard to find and I almost lost my hope to actually see them. But finally I was lucky and I saw one just before the sun was going down. After 49 days of biking, I rolled into Turkey and I met up with my good friends Sarah and Drew. One morning my friends Jake, Steffi and Kara invited me for a very lovely breakfast. The 23rd of October I made it to Melbourne where I took the night ferry over to Tasmania. So I got off the ferry 7.30 in the morning and I started to bike up north.
And one evening I spot this little thing on the road. Mm, so I just find this little one on the street and I don't know what it is. And he's alive but he don't really wanna move. So I don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm gonna try to rescue him. So I put him here in my little front bag. And yeah, we're gonna see if we can get some help somewhere. The little kookaburra enjoyed a 5k bike ride and finally I found a good home for him at a little farm. Tasmania is very hilly but also very very beautiful. So I crossed over to the east coast of St. Helen and the weather was getting a little bit more chilly and colder than it's been the last couple of weeks. Tasmania, snow. In Hobart I met up with my great friend Rob that showed me around and also invited me into his family's home. I also celebrated that I had done 8000 kilometers in 54 days. Rob took me to a wildlife sanctuary and I got to hug my first bombat. And we also got to see the beautiful Tasmanian devil. Water. Hey, you have to move, little one. It's a highway here. You will become flat. Listen to this, it sounds like one million car alarms that is on at the same time. Day 16, 9000 K into the trip, my friend Malcolm came and surprised me along the road. I'm out of the neck. Okay, here she comes. Oh, look, mine is bigger. It's a rock cut. Oh, I've got something on my road. Oh, wow. Look. Hey, guys. When I came to Sydney, I met up with my friend Robbo and I also stayed with him and his sister Danielle. So I find this creep here in <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> He's having Bye. a go on the bike. <laughs> See ya! Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also part of the trip, you are along the highway, uh, big track, bad weather, still fun. Had some beautiful days biking along the east coast and met a lot of old friends along the way. Thanks Liam, Matti, Josh and Jasmine and also Timmy for hanging out and letting me stay with you guys. I'm not a super big fan of biking in big cities and the Gold Coast in Brisbane was actually really tricky to both get in and get out of.
after entering Queensland the weather started to get way warmer and hotter than it's been the last couple of weeks. Often when you're doing bike tours, luxury stuff like shower, eating hot food and doing laundry is not that common. So then you really do appreciate all the help you get along the way from both friends and new friends along the way. So thank you all for helping me out and making my trip a bit easier and more comfortable. So this is my uh, last morning biking uh, into Cannes. And then my trip is over. After biking 12,100 kilometers for 82 days, I arrived in Cairns. Unfortunately, the weather conditions was not really doing me a favor. It was already plus 43 degrees in Cairns, and in, and in the Northern Territories, it was up around 49 degrees. So I had to stop my journey, and I went to New Zealand between, and then I flew back to Cairns to finish my loop in the end of April. So it's the 30th of April, 7.30 in the morning and I'm standing here in Cairns and uh, now I'm gonna start my trip back to Broome. It's 4,000 km left. It felt so good to be back on the bike and my first day I did 147k and 20 of this K was a huge climb, probably the biggest climb I ever done. I felt a little bit nervous the first couple of days since I knew I was getting into very very warm areas and that the temperatures was gonna increase for every day the further up north I went into the northern territories. Also the distance between towns was very very big so I knew I had to do really big days so often I bike between 150 to 200 kilometers per day. I changed my daily routines a little bit so I got up at 6.30, packed my stuff and started to bike around 7 in the morning every day. Normally I do around 70 to 100 kilometers before I stop and having breakfast. Okay, I thought it couldn't get worse, but I was wrong. For 1000 kilometers between Clancurry and up to Catherine, I had so much flies around me and it was really really hard to escape from them. I had to sit and wait until the sun was getting down and then I could squeeze into my tent in the night. Otherwise I would have around 30 flies with me. Also, it was a little bit of a project to eat. I had to walk around with my plate, otherwise they would just attack me. So I went to the hot springs here in Mataranka and it was lovely, but I'm running late. The sun is going down and I still have 10 k to go. So I have to hurry! <laughs> When I got to Darwin, my good friend Sean showed me around and also showed me where the big saltwater crocodiles live. It was amazing to see these big animals in the wild. I was so impressed and they're pretty scary but also very fascinating at the same time. It's a lot of cattle up north and also in the Western Australia. 
Unfortunately, that also means that many of the cows become road kills. Also, many kangaroos are getting killed and small other animals, which is very sad to see. I had a pretty hectic time with the water situation when I biked back to Broome. I had to carry at least 15 litres with me every day. That meant that everything was getting pretty heavy, so I was happy when I found a camp spot that had a pool to cool myself down a little bit. A lot of people ask me if I'm not scared when I'm biking along the roads for road trains and other traffic, but I have to say I felt very safe the whole time and I didn't have any close calls. Also a lot of people wondering if I'm not scared in the night when I'm sleeping in the tent since Australia has some of the most dangerous and poisoned animals in the world. But I actually only saw one single snake in the whole trip. So as you know my tent poles broke so I have nothing left and this is my little MacGyver solution. And yeah, I guess it's better than nothing. So my answer is no, plus in the evening you're too tired to be scared. So I was laying on this bench resting and suddenly I felt that someone was eating on my hair and it was this little man. He probably thought it was hay. So this is my top three things that I had in Australia. First of all, uh, biking sandals. Maybe not the prettiest on the planet. It has clips under, but it's amazing if you get really swollen feet when it's warm like I do and it gets really painful. Amazing. Then it's this uh, thumb cell charger that you just fold out. I had it on the back of my bike or the tent and you can charge your phone in yeah, probably one hour it takes to get it fully charged when it's sunshine. And then it's this water sack, 10 liters extra water you can have in it. Also had that in the back of my bike and it was really handy and probably saved my life a few times. Normally the last days of a tour feels very sad, but actually this time I was a bit relieved because the water situation been very stressful and I was really happy that I almost made it. So I got 20 kilometers to go out of 16,200 kilometers. It's day 109 and a bike to run Australia. So the 27th of May, I was back where I started, back in Broome. I'm so happy and I'm so relieved that everything went good and I had an amazing time exploring Australia. The bike trip was 16,100 kilometers. It took me 109 days, 805 hours on the bike and I spent 87 nights in my tent. I averaged 148 k's per day and I only had two rest days around the whole country. I only saw one alive snake along my whole journey. Thank you Australia, now it's time for me to go home and thanks for having me and taking so good care.